Joining me in the studio this morning is United School District Superintendent, Mr. Jeff Witzick. Good morning, Jeff. Good morning. And you're one of our freezers today. Yeah, I uh, I bundled up so I could be out there about noon today, <laughs> taking the sun. Yeah, United's been well represented. Your entire, uh, most of your coaching staff has been out over the last two days, as well as um, um Chris Shores was there yesterday. A number of people, Chris Rep, who works with you. Sure. So United was well represented. Thank you. Yeah, no, uh, we're glad to do it. It's a, it's a fun opportunity for everybody to get out and see some people and, and do some good things for the community. Uh, always a good cause, for sure. How was the, the superintendent, or excuse me, how was the uh, school board meeting? Uh, it was good. We had a really good meeting last night, I felt like. A um, lot of, June's not a real hectic month um, so it wasn't a terribly long meeting either um, but we were trying to button up some things for the 22-23 school year hard to believe it's over it seems like we just started but uh, we amended our budget officially we had presented an amended budget last month and uh, wanted to make sure uh, we, we were meeting all of our requirements budget wise and so we did have to amend a couple funds nothing nothing major um, our own m fund was probably was our by far our largest amendment um, and I attribute that mostly to just home ownership uh, you know you own four buildings and a couple bus barns and some things and it's it uh, you know buildings take on age and wear and tear and things come up and we just as much as we try and stay within a specific budget, uh, things pop up and we, we end up spending a little more than we wanted to um, in those cases. But um, we, we got over just barely in our IMRF uh, Social Security. I, I feel like that was a product of just uh, maybe an additional hire as the year went on for certain reasons and, and a lot of sub um Sub substitutes that we had to to fill for 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 some things and then um, insurance uh, didn't didn't uh, guess exactly right on how much our insurance was going to increase last year um, from a property casualty and liability standpoint so uh, those things you know they sneak up on you uh, we we had the reserves and every one of the funds to to manage that all of our other funds came in surplus some of them. Not much of a surplus, pretty much right on budget, but uh, that's that's what a budget is: is uh, a target, a plan, trying to trying to meet something. And for the most part, we did all right overall. We are going to be a surplus budget, but uh, we did have those funds we needed to amend and, and get righted before we submitted our final budget to the uh, state. So. I'm going to have you put your consulting hat on here for a second. A lot of folks are starting to come into the station and do their monthly updates, and they're being approached about solar panels, and that's Monmouth Roseville, West Central, the YMCA, and numerous other locations. There's a big one going up right here outside of uh, just outside of town on 67. So tell me a little bit about your experience so far with the solar field that you put up, or farm, I should say. Yeah, we so we have solar panels on two of our campuses. Um, our two, two of our three campuses are Ameren, um, provi- provided electricity. So um, they were, they were, um, uh, we had the opportunity to go solar on those campuses. Um, our, th- our third one is not Ameren. So um, a lot more hoops to jump through. So we've kind of kicked that can down the road for now. But um, the other two, we put solar in. The, it, we're a year and a half into it. Um, we went online, I think, in January of 22. Um, so we're a year and a half into it. Savings have been pretty good. Um, you know, it's it's hard to read. And again, we're we're just now hitting. We we bank um, power too. So this summer, the the lack of rain so far this this spring and summer, and the amount of sunshine we've had. Um, I'd like to think we're banking up. This this summer should be a big, big win for us, and it may carry us into the fall for quite a quite a ways. Um, last summer, unfortunately, we had some downtime with the panels, um, so we didn't get a full summer's worth of um, of production of harvest. So hard to know exactly how that worked, but I do know we're seeing a savings. And if you just compare the bills and the spending on those two campuses compared to the non-solar campus, it's it's night and day. Um, you got to factor in size and and what we're doing on those campuses too a little bit. But um, 
you know per per unit used uh, there's no doubt we're we're way ahead from where we were um and that only grows from year year to year um we'll, we'll see more and more savings as time goes on we're talking with superintendent of united school district jeff witsett and uh if if i could ask who so if they get damaged is that the solar company's responsibility so that depends on how you how you work your agreement in our situation it is it's, okay. it's their responsibility however when they're not producing that impacts our bill sure um so that that's a that's a hard thing to swallow a little bit but it is the agreement we we uh signed into and the reality is even when we're not using the solar that we're produced our rate is extremely low we signed on for a flat rate um, that will no, never exceed. And, and so even when we do have to use purchased power, um, it, it's at a much reduced rate. So it's still a, still a good thing for us. Um, it's just not as good as when the, when the panels are flying high. Actually, this week, just, just Wednesday, the uh, maintenance teams were out for the solar groups, and they were cleaning our panels and, and doing some maintenance work on them to make sure that they are producing and harvesting at the at their highest possible rate. And finally, how long do these last, or what was your agreement? Our agreement's 25 years, um, so we're locked in. We, we have that rate that we locked into per kilowatt hour, and and it, timing is everything too. Um, you know, if we'd have done the, if we'd have done the, um, if we'd have put them in five years ago, uh, we probably wouldn't have seen quite the savings, or you wouldn't have been able to accrue quite the savings. But with the increase in electricity rates over the last year or two, about this time we we put them in live, the in other rates increased across the the state and the country and. So we're seeing even more savings because we're we're not reflecting the increases that everybody else is seeing. So okay. timing timing worked out pretty well for us too to yeah. to show a pretty good savings. Okay, well, good, good for you guys. Anything uh, you know to add back into what you can do more for kids on campus was your intent, anyway. Yeah, right. Like I said, O and M's hard a hard fund to balance anyway. Um, we're seeing a little bit of savings there. I, you know, it's it's. Uh, it's measurable. Um, the savings is definitely measurable, but I expect that to just grow over time and, and be money back into our fund that we can use elsewhere as, as time goes on. Okay. What else was at your board meeting? Um, we did some uh, logistic kind of housekeeping stuff. The We, we passed a, a district plan that basically allows me to do all of our federal grants uh, it allows me to do a little bit of the grunt work up front one time instead of having to replicate it 14 times for every federal grant we, we provide. So um, I did it once, and the board approved it once, so now I can submit that, and it just kind of streamlines some of the grant stuff we're doing. So I do appreciate that for sure. We had some policy updates we had to get done. We, uh, we've we been working on that for over a year now, and I think we're finally done to the point now where – when I bring policy um, updates to the board, it'll be because it's a policy we want to review and look at. And, um, you know, about three times a year, we're also going to have to look at things as the legislation changes and, yes. uh, and how that impacts us. But right now we're back on track to where I think it's uh, we've got a couple that we'll be rev reviewing next month in a first reading so that we can get moving on them. But um, overall, our policy uh, manual is pretty much back up to date and, and feel pretty good about that. You had a lot of legislation in this last uh, few years, and that does keep changing. That ball does keep moving. Um, what are some examples of policy updates that you have to make or you need to make per the state legislature? Yeah, so the big one that's coming, um, and we probably should, it w I would love to have had it done for this month um, because I think implementation is technically July 1st, so we're, we're going to be a little behind if we start using it at our July board meeting, but um, we've got the Aaron's Law um, policy. It's a brand new one um, regarding the, the um, traits and characteristics of sexual abuse among students and how teachers and staff and people are, how we're supposed to approach um, combating that in our schools. Um, so, and, that, and that's been coming for a while, and, I, and I've got some 
boilerplate language on it. It's but it, man, it's a heavily involved policy. Uh, I know a lot of districts have gone ahead and and gotten theirs done and and through, but uh, it's definitely something we've got to address over the summer months here. So when we get back in the buildings, we've got our policy in place. A lot of things like that. Um, like you said, legislatively, a lot of the policies that that are presented to us that need updated are just legal references. Um, you know, a court case here or there has changed the reference in the policy. It doesn't change what the policy says. It's just why the policy is what it is. Um, so we do try and update those, but I try and concentrate more on the ones that actually have some substantive change. Um, you know, another one we passed last night, um, our, our vocational kids, we, we do take advantage of the Galesburg Area Vocational Center. And historically, our kids have always paid 10% of the tuition cost um, to, to attend those programs. Uh, kind of a skin in the game mentality so that the kids take it seriously and, and have a reason to, to finish up and get something out of it. Mm -hmm. um, and our board over the last two months has talked about it and, and decided that they, as much as they would love to pay for the whole thing, um, they still like the skin of the game mentality. So we are, we, we passed policy, a change last night that says we will still charge the 10%, but upon a successful completion of the course, the kids will get their 10% back. Um, so if they don't take it seriously, they've donated to the program, I guess. But if they do take it seriously and get get what they're supposed to out of it, they'll get their money back. And it was it was a free uh, certificate or a free program. Um, and we, you know, we've got kids in the CNA programming and the um, culinary arts programming and fire science and those kind of things. Great opportunities that we just can't offer um, throughout our building. So. Uh, we're glad to offer that. We're glad to pay for the full freight, but we'd still like those kids to to upfront that 10% and, and work to get it back. Boy, those cooking shows, those travel <clears throat> channel shows, they have made culinary arts one heck of a exciting opportunity, it seems like. They have, and even in within our building, um, our, our revitalized home ec program that we're bringing back slowly but surely, uh, you know, we had, towards the end of the year, we had a, several chopped um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, contests, I guess you would call them. Um, so the kids were uh, would get their one ingredient and have to yep. develop a, a dish out of it. And I will tell you right now, our teachers do not mind being the judges for things like that. <laughs> right. So uh, it, it's, been, it's been fun. I know uh, there was a lot of that going on. When I, I watched the breakfast one go off uh, and that was pretty pretty impressive pretty fun yeah so. it's it's just really it's just been something that started you know decades ago but man I mean it just seems like this last I don't know five to ten years and then especially through COVID people were learning to cook at home watching right. all these different shows and it's just exploded um, and you know you've got all just all kinds of them um, the bizarre places, you know, to eat or the food paradise, there's all kinds of things. Yeah. I'm a drive-ins and dives yeah, kind of guy, yeah, but, yeah. uh, yeah, that's probably the one I catch, but yeah, it's not Julia Childs anymore. There are Correct. all kinds of opportunities yes. to watch and learn and, and do different things. Yeah. So, pretty cool. Well, good. So that takes care of the vocational center in Galesburg. Glad that the partnership continues. That's a good one. Yeah, um, we're glad to have that. And they've done so many cool things here recently. And I, I don't know how many people have been able to tour the new facility they've got over there. It's kind of conjoined with that new pre-K facility across from the high school over in Galesburg now. But uh, you, you tour that and see the opportunities the kids have. It's it's awesome uh, it's it makes me jealous to not be 16 again and and be able to do some of those things would would be really cool what would you be now if it was if you were 16 man that's a great question um but i do i watch our kids come through and i watch my own kids go off and try and figure out w what their spot in life is and um i do there's no doubt i think i would do things differently um i think uh with the Sampson Promise that the United and the Mama Torsville kids have available to them and the Carl Sandburg College opportunities, I I can't imagine not taking advantage and going at least to a certificated program on my own time and, and getting something done that way. Um, I think that would be 
definitely a program I would I would look into, but I don't I don't know that I'd be a whole lot different. Um, I, I kind of had it in my head I was going to be a teacher right from the get go and and coach. So there's your new book right there, Mr. <laughs> Witsit. Yeah. Mr. Witsit, I'd still be a teacher. <laughs> I probably would. I I, I can't imagine That's at that good. point in my life not thinking that, but. Uh, with these kind of opportunities ahead of you, I don't. Maybe I would have looked at that differently. I don't know. A uh, good thing is you don't have to. That's right. Um, and you know, as as cool as that is, and as fun as that is for these kids to have these opportunities, I just think it makes it even harder to decide because there are so many ways they can go. So yeah, I I do like the idea that we we are putting a little different emphasis on the trades and the certificate programs instead of just the four year degree programming um you know i talked to all four of my kids personally about you know you don't have to necessarily go right to college and do the degree program if that's not what you think you want to do uh there there are other avenues to to have a really good life and yeah kids are figuring that out our country thrives because of our people we need everything you gotta have all services covered and uh, whether it's academic, um, it doesn't matter. We need everything from railroading to teachers to police to welding to you name it. We need it all. Coding, mm-hmm. hospitals, everything about America that is great is because the opportunities are here to do something that that you know works and makes the country go go round. Absolutely, and and manual labor don't don't uh, don't you know, the, the construction stuff that I've you know, put a little bitty deck on, on our house not a couple of years ago and the math and the the problem solving oh, that yeah. goes into that. And, you know, do not, um, do not look past how much um, brain power oh, goes yeah. into those kind of jobs too because it's, it's, and it makes it fun. I, I think those would be looking at a blank slate and figuring out how to make that work is, is really kind of fun. The so, architecture, all of it. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and all needed those guys in the sky up on the lifts, working on the power poles. <laughs> right. Gotta have it. Yep. You gotta know your and physics. We've, we've and got several of our kids have gone off and become linemen for the power companies. And, uh, you know, they, they have great experiences. They have some really cool stories to tell. What's so. that old Alabama song from the eighties? Mm. 40-hour work week. That Was that the song where they talked about everyone from being in the wheat fields to the factories right. and all that good stuff? It takes, so. takes us all. All right. Anything else you want people to know about United? Um, no, we still have a few postings out there. Um, we're, we're trying to get ironed out. Um, we're in After last night, we're in a lot better shape from a personnel standpoint. We got some hires made last night that we needed. Uh, but still a few openings, so we're still seeking, seeking candidates for some of that. Uh, hopefully we can knock off the, the bulk of those in July. Um, online registration will open July 17th. We'll get that up and running so people can get their kids registered and, and ready to go. And uh, it's, it's now, after last night, it is now 2324 is what we talk about, so... Okay. We'll talk about some other things uh, coming up later when you're out at Freezing for Food. Sounds great. Thank you. That is Mr. Witsit with us from the United School District on 1330 WRAM.